The Camera 2 API in Android L gives you immense control over the camera. I'm Anka Cotwell, a developer advocate at Google, and I'd like to show you how amazing these APIs are. But first, let's look at the KitKat camera API. It really was designed for straightforward point and shoot camera apps. And because of this, there are limited ways to access streaming image data. The API also doesn't support any manual capture control methods. In order to overcome these limitations and give developers the capability to build awesome camera apps, we've introduced a completely new set of APIs under the android.hardware.camera2 package. Let's take a look. These new APIs are designed as a pipeline instead of a one-way stream. It is now possible to pre-configure output surfaces and attach them to the camera. Each surface can be a destination for a stream of image buffers, and you can pass a request through the capture session. Each request will be converted into one result object, and the destination surface will be filled with image buffers. It is possible to pass multiple requests simultaneously, and these requests will be processed asynchronously. Let's look at what it takes to build a simple camera app using these new APIs. First, you need to detect camera hardware. You can do so by enumerating the existing cameras on a device and get the detailed information off the camera by using the camera manager service. You can then use a camera by calling the open camera method with an ID and a callback listener. When a device is ready, the onOpen method is invoked with a camera device instance. This instance is the representation of a single camera. Before submitting requests, you need to define a set of buffer output targets and connect them to the camera device. This is done by initiating the camera capture session. For example, you can use Texture View for previewing, Media Recorder for recording a video, or the Render Script Allocator allocation for YUV processing. When you create a surface, the size of the surface is important. The camera device only supports a certain type of size, and therefore you must set the valid size for each surface. First, we get uh, the available stream configurations that the camera supports via the scalar stream configuration map. The size should be one of the results from the get output sizes method. For this example, we're just going to grab the first one, but in a real world scenario, you may want to look through this array and pick the appropriate size. After creating the necessary surface, you can call the create capture session method. Be patient, as creating a session can require several hundred milliseconds. Once the session is ready, you can deal with the requests. Based on your needs, you can create a request builder by using one of the predefined templates. Then you can build the capture request by calling the build method in the builder. Here, template preview is used for the preview request. And template still capture is used for the JPEG capture request. So now you have both a session and a request. And there are two options to submit requests. Capture is for capturing one image using a given capture request. On the other hand, set repeating request is for capturing images continuously by using a given request again and again until you explicitly stop it. Both capture and set repeating requests have overloads that take a list of capture requests. Capture burst for capture and set repeating re burst for set repeating requests. However, before submitting the capture request, you might need to adjust the camera settings as per your needs. It is possible to modify any properties of the builder before building a request. These can be things like white balance mode, effects, and even flash settings. There are some really great effects that you can apply, like negatives, and sepia, and solarize, and more. 
You can interact with exposure and focus settings precisely using Control AF trigger and Control AE pre capture trigger. Be careful though, if you forget to set focus properly, you can end up with an image that's a little bit blurry. Whenever you submit requests, you can pass a capture listener callback to keep track of capture progress. For example, you can use on capture started for playing a shutter sound or for playing a capture animation. And after a capture request is processed, on capture completed will be called with a total capture request uh, result instance. At this moment, total capture result contains the final configuration of a capture process and the destination surfaces will soon be sent the final captured data. You can access the output image through the surface and then it's up to you on how to use that image. In a basic camera app, you could get the bytes buffer of the image from the image reader and store it onto the SD card. So this is the new Camera 2 API. It is designed as a very flexible and unified pipeline for all camera-related tasks, and it also increases the ability of applications to control the camera subsystem. You can discover more details about the Camera 2 APIs and useful samples at developer.android.com. Be sure to check out the Android Developer Preview for more new APIs. Thank you.